Yeast may be the most mysterious ingredient in pizza dough, but it doesn't have to be. Stick around and see how to get the best rise out of your dough. Let's make some pizza. I'll be honest, I never thought I'd do an entire video on yeast and leavening, but here I am doing an entire video on it. And as I prepared for this video, I realized I could probably do a whole series of videos just on that. There's so much to it, but I promise we're gonna cut to the chase in this one and make it easy to understand and easy to digest. Today, we're gonna make some Neapolitan and some Bari style pizzas. We're using the same dough, but the Bari style dough balls are smaller because we roll them out thinner and I need them to still fit in the oven. Whereas the Neapolitan style are a little bit larger. All of these are just about ready to make pizza at this point. The leavening process for pizza dough takes place in really three steps. So the first step is when you're creating the big ball of dough. And that's the first part, when you've just mixed the yeast into the other ingredients with the dough. The second part is after you cut that dough into dough balls that are sitting like individually ready to be made into pizzas. And then the third part happens while that dough is waiting to go into the oven. Of course, there's leavening that takes place in the oven. See my latest video on that. But overall, it's kind of this three-step process. Big ball, dough balls, and then just waiting to be put in the oven. During these three steps, yeast is doing its job, which is basically taking the sugars that exist in the flour and then breaking them down into carbon dioxide and alcohol. So you've probably noticed that there are multiple types of yeast available. The first is what they call fresh yeast, sometimes also called cake yeast, not because it's used in cakes, but because it comes in these small little kind of flaky cakes uh, they almost look like bouillon cubes or something like that. Sometimes it comes in a big stick like a stick of butter as well. But fresh yeast is one type and that's really the type that's recommended for pizza if you have a good supply of it and you know how to take care of it. The second is active dry yeast. And active dry yeast is kind of a powdery substance and that's probably the one you're used to using. The active dry yeast is essentially dried extremely rapidly and so it stops the process of the yeast to activate the yeast, you actually have to add water. As we make the dough in the recipe that I use, we start with the water, we add some salt, and then we add the yeast to the water. There's another kind of yeast that's called instant yeast. Now, instant yeast has some advantages and disadvantages we won't go over here, but it's similar to active dry yeast. And you have to be careful because there are a couple of types that cause problems, and those are the rapid rise yeast. The rapid rise yeast really cause too much inflation of the dough too early on, and they create problems in the process. You're more likely to get your dough to essentially fall down. So I wouldn't use the rapid rise yeast uh, at all. In fact, I use the active dry yeast just to avoid the instant yeast. What happens if I use too little or too much yeast? Well, too little yeast, obviously your dough is never gonna rise and you'll just get kind of flat bread out of it. Using too little yeast is usually not a mistake made by the dosing out the yeast. It's usually because either the yeast is defective or inactive or even dead. It's easy to test the yeast by just activating a little bit beforehand just to make sure that your yeast is ready to go and it's gonna make good dough. The other type of error is too much yeast. And too much yeast really causes more problems than too little yeast because with too little yeast, you're probably not gonna actually cook anything with it because you'll see it. If you use too much yeast, it can cause several problems. First of all, it can cause the dough to rise and fall too quickly. And so the window of time you have to make your pizza is just too short and you end up making some pizzas that are subpar. The second is the dough itself and the crust of the pizza is gonna taste a little too much like either yeast or it's gonna taste too much like alcohol. Other things that can happen once you start cooking the pizza with the yeast is you can have a really, really active oven rise, like an overactive oven rise when the pizza is cooking and kind of blow it out. The other problem that too much yeast can cause is that it actually makes the crust of the pizza look white. It doesn't brown properly. It has more of a, a gray color to it 
from the heating of the oven or even just looks kind of white. Let's go back to that question of too little yeast. That's usually because something happens to kill off the yeast. And one of the things that can kill off the yeast is the wrong temperature. Well, it really comes down to the temperature of the water. And the correct temperature for the water is a function of the temperature of the, the ambient temperature, essentially, and the temperature of the ingredients. And there's a formula for that. The ambient temperature and add in the temperature of the ingredients. One easy way to calculate the temperature of the ingredients is actually if they've been stored at room temperature, that temperature is gonna be one degree less than the room temperature. You take that number from those two added together and you subtract that from 66 and you'll get the ideal temperature for the water. If it's too much higher than that, you could potentially kill your yeast. If it's too much lower than that, you're gonna slow down the reaction and your dough may not rise as well. For example, today I took temperature measurements just to make sure I got the temperature of the water correct. We're always working in degrees Celsius. I took the ambient temperature or the room temperature and that was about 24 degrees Celsius. So I subtracted one degree and I get 23 degrees Celsius for my ingredients. I add those two together, that gives me 47 degrees Celsius. I subtract that from 66 and that gives me 19 degrees Celsius. I need to be within a couple of degrees of that to have the optimal temperature for the water. So don't kill your yeast. Recognize that if you're working outdoors and the temperature is higher or you keep your home at a higher or lower temperature than I do, you need to vary that temperature. So there's not an exact response for everyone. And that's the trouble some people get in is they try to get a definitive answer no matter what the conditions are, but it depends on the conditions. If you're working in a food truck, for example, and it's a summer day, you may need to subtract quite a bit of temperature or quite a few degrees Celsius off of the temperature of that water before you actually start making the pizza to have an optimal dough rise. My recipe is the one that's used by the AVPN or the True Italian Pizza Association online. And it's very, very simple. One liter of water, I use 50 to 60 grams of salt. I use one gram of yeast and then 1600 to 1650 grams of flour. Why use so little yeast in that recipe? Well, we're actually using a stronger dough and that's why we use the type 00 flour or a mixture of type 00 and type 0. That's a whole other discussion, but let's just say you're using type 00 flour and that flour has a strong W rating, a W rating of 280 or higher, which is really kind of what you're looking for. If you have that kind of a strength rating, the W rating, you want your dough to grow a little bit slower. That allows you to kind of trap more air within the dough to keep more of the fluffiness or the puffiness of the pizza available for when you cook. You can slow down the actual leavening process by using less yeast. So I use one gram of yeast. Now, if you look at the disciplinare, it says three grams of yeast, but three grams of yeast in the regulation is three grams of fresh yeast. To calculate how much active dry yeast to use, you need to divide that by three. So that's why I use one gram of yeast when I'm making my pizza. I let my dough rise outside today because Essentially, I got off to a late start. I made the dough in the morning. Usually, I let it rise overnight. Despite having only risen during the day, this dough was extremely light, easy to work with, almost required no stretching at all. Unfortunately, I had some background noise so you can't hear uh, all of this, but I was commenting on how easy to work with this dough is. Huh? No, that's okay. But I don't have to like do much with it because it's so, Soft. You like the cheese.
Watch out, I'm gonna Using too much yeast is a common mistake. I think it's because people are afraid that their yeast won't rise because the process is a little mysterious to them. Hopefully this video has helped demystify that process for you and you feel more confident about putting the right amount of yeast to get the best tasting, best pizza dough that you've ever made. If this pizza helped you out, I'm really happy because that's what we're all about at Bitonso Pizza is helping backyard pizza aioli raise their game to the next level. And if you liked it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We have new videos every week and we have a lot of different topics similar to this one to help you make better pizza. If you've had experience, good or bad, using too much or too little yeast or other experiences with dough, hit us up in the comments below. We'll respond to them and let's get the conversation started.